Good morning, St. James. Today's reading, the first reading is from Luke chapter 5, 1 to 11. And here we see that Jesus was uh, walking, I mean, along by the side of the lake, lake of Gennesaret. And there were so many people coming to hear him. And it says that the multitude pressed about him. That's the word of God says. And then he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen, they have, they have, uh, they have gone to clean their nets. And uh, Jesus got into one of the boats and uh, apparently that belongs to Simon, who is called Peter. And he asked him to put out a little from the land and then Jesus actually, he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. That means Peter, Simon has been listening to what Jesus was preaching, was saying to the multitude, maybe that is something, it would have touched his heart because it's from authority and then about the kingdom of God. He must be today preaching about the salvation so he heard that we, the scripture doesn't tell us what Jesus is taught, but he says he has, he has preached. And then when he has stopped speaking, he has said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Then you can see the reaction of uh, Simon, which is in verse five. And he said, master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So here you can understand, Peter must have been thinking, you are a preacher and I am a fisherman, but to, he's a professional fisherman. So, I mean, anybody, if you come and then tell something in your own profession, profession, we don't like it. And in a similar way, he was uh, very much disappointed that Jesus asked him to put that too. He clearly said, they have toiled all over all night because normally the catch is in the night time, the morning time, daytime, they don't catch any fish. So he's saying that we have done it and then we didn't catch anything in the night. So what's the point in laying the nets now? That's what he, his thinking was. And then he did say, that's what his logic says. It is not possible. But uh, then as he has listened to Jesus, that means the word of God, because of that, he thought, perhaps, as you are saying, nevertheless, I don't, I, I don't believe it, but nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. And he had to call for help there from his partners to come and then give a hand with the, with the fish because it was such a big cash, catch that, uh, they could not, uh, he, could, he could not manage. Then they say, the verse seven says, so the signal to their partners in the other boat, other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats. So they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he says, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And, uh, Actually, you can see even verse nine says they were all astonished because they had the catch of the fish because they, he, he could understand this is something miraculous. It's not possible. So then Simon Peter must have thought he got that kind of realization about Jesus. And he, he that's the reason in the, the verse 10, it says that the, he, verse eight, he did say that, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Whenever we meet Jesus, then our filthy uh, in, in, inner, inner being will be exposed. Then we will know who we are and where we are. So it's a great, uh, great encouragement for all of us that uh, Jesus loves everyone. And especially here in the verse 10, he says, do not be afraid. From now on, you'll catch men. In Greek, the catch means, the word catch means to capture a life. And it's, it's, it's tense, suggests it's continuous action. 
And from now on, Peter and the others are continuously to capture people for the kingdom of God. So perhaps we all have sometimes this kind of failure, or sometimes we may be struggling financially in order to manage with uh, what we have, and then maybe the expenditure is so much, and this is something that we, we all, perhaps most of us might have gone through. I myself remember that was in, I think it was 96, 95, 96 that time, two, three years we were struggling with the credit card usage in the sense the, the salary used to finish in July, very early in the month. Then we used to borrow on the credit card and pay it off when the salary comes again. So it's a monthly, he says the reason is that the, to avoid the interest rate on the credit card, trying to pay as much as possible the whole of the amount by on the first of the month. And during that time, we stopped giving the tithes because it's a natural thing. It's a common, reasonable thing not to, uh, not to give the tithes because the PAYE we can't avoid that goes, but we, we stopped giving the tithes and justifying in ourselves that uh, God knows our situation. God knows that we haven't got enough money. So it's okay, God can understand. So there is no need for us to worry. That's how we, we were thinking in that way. And uh, sometime in, I think in, in October in the 96, there was a, the, 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 in, in the church, the, they were asked, they called for country offerings in the sense they, they said that they, they are going to, they were planning for uh, the expansion of the church and then their activities outside the, within London. So then at that time, they asked for pledges and uh, they, we have, they are asked for pledges of thousand pound. If anybody, can, if anybody can give, even if you don't have now, you believe in God and then they ask God and then uh, you pay it later. We give it, anybody wants to give the pledges. Then we, we prayed about it and then we were inspired and then we were given the pledge for a thousand pound, which we don't have. And sometime in March, if I remember well, uh, Nita got uh, some tax refund, 970 pound. Then we added 30 to make it 1,000. Then we were in dilemma whether to pay to the, for the pledge because we are clear of our credit card. In the end, with lots of uh, discussions and then uh, with, the, with the prayer, with the messages that we heard in the church and as well as from the friends, we decided to pay, pay it to the church. And the God has miraculously worked after that because we started giving the tithes and uh, we, within a year later, we moved from two bedroom flat to three bedroom house and we paid it off in seven years. And uh, Nita had uh, a transplant which lasted for 21 years. So God in every way he has done, which we cannot do. We cannot imagine how these things can happen. So this is something I thought I just shared with you, how God has you, God, God can turn around our situation. And Paul, in, uh, in the other reading, 2 Corinthians 8, chapter 1 to 9, Paul is uh, actually writing to us about the Christians in Macedonia. As, as such, they are, all, they, they, they are all Gentiles. And Star, Pete, Paul has uh, uh, planted some churches there, and he asked all these churches to give some, uh, some offerings so that he can, they can take it to the um, uh, to Jerusalem for the Christians who are suffering there. So due to that reason, they started giving. And Paul is, uh, is writing about especially this Macedonian church. They are, they are not rich people. They were, they, were, they were actually struggling for their existence type of thing. They had, in those kind of circumstances, he says, the sacrificially they have given for, for the other, the, the church in uh, Jerusalem. And Paul clearly says in verse five that, uh, and not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. That shows the Christian giving. First of all, we need to give ourselves to the Lord. Otherwise we cannot give money because the money is very, if, if for everyone it is very dear. 
and then we can't let money go. And whereas he Paul saying that uh, once we love God, then it is possible. And Paul also writes in the uh, in in verse eight saying that I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. So he clearly says it's not a command; it's only it's a it's something voluntary. So if you love God, you'll be able to give. And he says in verse nine is the key where he says the in addition to all these things, for the we know the for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that through though he was rich. At for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. This is the promise because Jesus is not is not talking about uh, his uh, uh, economy or his wealth when he was uh, on the earth. He's saying that the eternally Jesus Christ is the Lord. He has created the, the everything and he's the sustainer. And still he left all his. Uh, glory and then he came and be, became a, a man a, like you and me and then he lived a life and he has sacrificed his life for us so that we all go free and the life in abundance because Jesus is living so he is asking us how far we trust in him and then contribute not only for our church we want to contribute in such a way that we can help other struggling churches. That's what the Christian giving is, not only us, but think about others. These are let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word. Lord, help us, Lord, that we understand your word and, and guide us, Lord, to follow your word. Holy Spirit, take us, take, a, take us forward, take us closer to Jesus, that we'll be able to experience his love and grace in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.